So I wanted to talk about a uh, pair of framed 1911s and 2011 pattern 1911s. And I'm trying to be very careful with the jargon here. So you're going to hear me kind of slowing down so that I try and get it right because this is my fourth take and I've reviewed the footage after every one of those takes and I make, I've made, uh, terminology mistakes so the first thing we're, we're going to talk about is this gun and i won't say anything for a second here i just want to kind of get some footage of the gun we'll show it first and excuse me excuse my uh lighting here it is midnight i've run out of sunlight and so we're working with a lamp that's throwing out some light but it's one-sided light so what is this gun it is a rock island armory both of these are uh, this is a single stack nine millimeter slash 22 TCM. And you can see that it says TCM on the side. It's got the TCM, but it's got the nine millimeter barrel in it. You can see that right there. Uh, so this gun came with two barrels, but it is a single stacked 1911. Notice that this is a two pieced, two piece system. Two piece meaning there's a frame with an integrated grip it's all of one and there's a slide and notice the panels okay so next gun is this and i'll be quiet again and just show the features of the gun one thing is definitely noticeable between this gun and that gun. We'll talk about it in a second. So this is a Rock Island Armory. This is a 10 millimeter. Uh, the difference between this gun and that gun is that this is a double stacked gun. This is a nine millimeter. Uh, as well, it's a two piece gun. Slide, frame. Grips are not, inter uh, grip panels are not interchangeable between the two. They are different. Yes, this has a magwell, but that really has no bearing. I can get a magwell for this too if I wanted. So, both of these are considered para-framed 1911s. Well, let's say this one is. Para-framed, double stack 1911 here. Okay, next, this is a Bull Armory SAS-2 Ultralight. So, compare this one, remember what I showed the features, and look at this one. So, this is a three-piece gun. This is not a para-patterned gun. This is a 2011-patterned gun. Even though it's sold as a 1911, 
it is a 2011 pattern gun, which really makes it a 2011. So, whereas before we talked about two piece, I guess, uh, elements of the gun, so both of these are having a slide and a frame. This one is a slide, a frame, which is here and the grip module, which is here. It's a three element gun, a three piece gun. Remember, slide, frame, grip module. The grip module is designed to be changed out. Um, this is a polymer grip module. Um, you could swap it out with a metal or alloy grip module or another, uh, another polymer grip module that has different textures. Last gun is this gun. All these guns are clear. So, what is this gun? This is a 1911, but it uh, it is what I consider a hybrid 1911 because it doesn't have grip panels. Uh, the grip textures are built into the frame of the gun. It's a solid framed uh, gun. It is also a double stack. This is not a 2011, it's two piece. Slide, frame. So, why is this one sold as a 2011, as a, excuse me, let me, re let me rephrase that and slow down. Why is this marketed and sold as a 1911 when it's 2011 pattern? Because Staccato, formerly known as STI, owns the 2011 patent. So they own the name. They own the marketing rights to the term 2011. So even though this is a 2011, it cannot be sold or marketed as a 2011. So they call it a 1911. Next question, is this a 2011? Most people consider this a 2011 because it's double stacked. It is not a 2011. It is a para patterned double stacked 1911. It is not a 2011. They are not the same. Why are they not the same? Remember what I said. This is a three piece gun. Slide. Frame. Grip. This is a two piece gun. Slide. Frame. 2011 can't be a two piece gun. That's not what defines a 2011. Uh, what defines a 2011 is the three parts. Specifically, the grip module. Why am I explaining all of this? Because I see uh, people all the time arguing on YouTube about 
these being, you know, when I say these, any type of Rock Island Armory, double stacked 1911, or any para Warthog that they think it's a 2011. It's not. Specifically because of what we just said. On all four of these guns, they are, they share the same manual of arms. So, one is a 1911, this is a 1911, that's a 1911, that is not. Um, even though they share the same manual of arms, there are differences between these guns. They are very similar, yet very different. Another thing that I see on Reddit, the subreddits, 1911 and 2011 forums, uh, well, subreddits, uh, the 1911 forums, uh, the sub forums on those 1911 forums that are comprised of uh, 2011s. Uh, and, and, and really just any, any discussion that I see anywhere online uh, usually kind of starts at like like this so in recent times there have been a flooding of the market of cheaper 2011 pattern handguns so this one and the Springfield Armory Prodigy Prodigy DS were really considered the gateway 2011s. Um, and remember, even though they're 2011s, they can't be marketed as 2011s. That's why I said the product, you know, I said the naming, uh, uh, the Prodigy DS. It's, that DS stands for double stack because Staccato owns the rights to use the, you know the term 2011 so even Springfield Armory as big as they are they cannot use that term so they call it the prodigy DS they call this one the 1911 um, as I was saying there's been a slew of new budget-minded 2011 patterned 1911s um, that have hit the market they either have hit the market in the last six months, the two of them have, and one that's on the way. So the two that have hit the market are the Live Free Armory Apollo 11 and the EAA Witness, uh, Gerson Witness 2311. Both of those are 2011 pattern, patterned, budget-minded handguns. Those two are the first, and they, they were released roughly at the same time. Both of those are the first 2011s that are under the $1,000 mark. When Rock Island fans and Para Warthog, Warthog fans hear that, they lose their minds. They, it's like they think they're losing some stake in something, uh, clout or something like that. But they always forget that this gun is not the same as this gun. Uh, so, so when someone says that the Gerson Witness 2311 is the first uh, sub $1,000 2011 pattern handgun, that's not factoring in this because they're not equal. They're not the same gun. It's apples and oranges. So when they say 2011 pattern handguns, they're talking guns like these. They're not talking guns like these. So uh, I, I, I really don't understand why that has to be explained, but for some reason, people are equate these guns as being very similar. Uh, and what I normally see is someone responding in a negative fashion you know on YouTube or or you know the, the, a subreddit stating 
well, they've been making double, you know, Rock Island Armory or Arms Corps has been making double stack 1911s the last 15 years. So those are the ones that have been, you know, they've always been under a thousand dollars. But you know that that's a that's a stupid take on things because when people are talking about 2011s, they're not talking about these guns. It's a whole separate matter. Uh, why are these not equal? For one, I told you, you know, the three the three element versus two element systems as well this is a budget minded gun some people say this is a budget minded gun um, I don't believe a $1500 gun is really a budget gun uh, this is probably for 2011's it probably is remember I was saying that this is a gateway I, it used to be a gateway model, but because of the new guns that are coming in that are budget minded that are under a thousand dollars, those are now the gateway um, 2011s. So this is now an intermediate 2011 because of the new tier structure. Uh, and none of this is set in stone, but really, if you look at the pricing, if you price the lowest priced 2011 and you go through every 2011 in existence you're going to find that this is mid midstream now if you factor in uh the tsas is coming as well as the gerson witness 2311 as well as the apollo 11 all three of those are budget minded and they're under a thousand dollars the difference is, is that every single one of those has a forged frame. There, and and usually it's alloy. So this one has an alloy frame. This one, and keeping in mind, it's a, it's a, it's I paid seven hundred twenty seven hundred thirty dollars for this. That's not exactly cheap, but. When I say it's a bargain gun, it's a you know it's it's a it's a budget gun. Um, it's parkerized. It's not really meant to be pretty. Um, it's rough cut. Um, I mean it it doesn't feel the same as this gun in my hand. So that's one. Another factor is is that this frame, as well as this frame, they're both made by the same company. They're not forged frames. Um, I believe Arms Corps uses precision cast frames. Um, so a lot of people, they think that cast means that it's problematic, it's not durable. I have yet to hear of, and this is a 10 millimeter. I have yet to hear of any, I've never heard in recent times, and when I say recent times, in the past 10 years, I haven't heard of any uh, Arms Corps precision cast frames cracking. So they're durable enough, but are they as durable as a forged frame? Uh, no, they're not. Um, Forge frame or forge parts to me means forever gun. That gun will be an it could can be an heirloom. It will last someone's lifetime and then that someone that someone's heir's lifetime it could be passed on and on. Um, depending on how it's used. It, now if you put pumping ten thousand rounds a, a a year through it. Yeah, you're, you're going to start seeing some wear. And even a frame will crack if it has enough rounds to it, right? Um, but uh, for for normal type usage, it, those are forever guns. I would not consider these 
to be forever guns. Now, take what I said and look at what's on the table here. I own all four of these guns. I don't have a problem owning a budget gun. These two are budget guns. I've had these for, for a while. Out of all of these, this is the first one that I bought. I bought this one a couple of years ago, and then I bought both of those last year. And I'm saying this because I'm a, a gun, I'm a fan of guns. I'm a gun advocate. Um, I don't mind shooting, you know, I just love shooting guns, period. I have a burst of thunder in my safe down the stairs because I like the way it looks and I like the way it shoots. Um, that's not a gun to be kind of standing on top of a hill and kind of saying probably, oh, I have a burst, uh, you know, but again, I like different things. Um, I'm not one to kind of, I can, I can afford staccatos. And again, I've talked about that before. I don't care about staccatos. Between both of these, both of these together, that's $3,000 right there. So why do, why do I own these? Because I, I love them. I love the way they look. I love the way they shoot. Um, no, they're not as pretty and they don't feel as good as these two, but that's besides the point. Now, with me being a fan of arms core guns, does that mean I have to put them on a pedestal? Are they as equal to these two guns? The, they all carry well. I think I've, I've carried all three of these except for this. You know, I have not carried this because that's impractical. This is almost three pounds. It's a big gun. It's a five-incher. Um, it is heavy. It is double stack. Um, it's different than this one. And it's got that magwell. It's not really designed to be carried. You might be able to get away with carrying it outside the waistband. If you're not trying to hide it, if you're at a range or if you're hunting or if you're in the woods hiking and stuff like that, yeah. Concealing, concealment and concealing, no. Um, but... I, again, I like all three of these guns. All four of these guns. I like them all. But as you know, you know, I said before that they they all share the same um, manual of arms. They all share the same manual of arms. All four of them. And I have a shitload more of 1911s in my safe down the stairs. So there's there's more than this. That does not make them equal. Every one of these are different. They might have the same manual of arms, but they're all different. I, I've explained all the differences there. Um, they're just different. Not everything has to be the same. And we're hitting up on the 23 minute mark. My promise this year was to try and stay in the 12 minute mark, but there's no way in hell I can fit all this in 12 minutes. So we have a 23 minute video. Um, we're going to end it here. I just wanted to kind of explain things. Um, again, they're all very similar, but there are some distinct differences between each one of these. Of the four, there's one 2011 in a bunch. This is not a 2011. This is not a 2011. This is a 1911. This is a 1911. This is a hybrid 1911. This is an actual 2011 that's marketed as a 1911 because Staccato has the 2011 trademark. So that's the summary of the video. All right. Good night.